Howdy, I'm Mark Hall Patton. I want to welcome you to the Clark County Museum on a bit of a rainy and stormy day. You know, normally when you come out to the museum, you are coming out to see the historic structures and all the historic material we have out here, and that's why we would like you to come out. But there are some other things about the museum grounds that you might not notice. For example, on a day like today where it's stormy, there's a little spitting rain and that, we normally notice a certain smell in the air. We, when you live on the desert, you kind of think, oh, it smells like rain. What you're actually smelling is not rain, but it's this plant over here with the yellow flowers. This is a creosote plant. And I'm gonna take you inside to our outdoor classroom. We have them actually all over the grounds and talk to you a little bit about what the creosote plant is and how it defines the Mojave Desert. As you walk through the museum grounds, you'll see a lot of these plants. You'll actually find creosote throughout the desert southwest from Texas all the way to California. Now, creosote's an interesting plant. It's a plant that grows from itself. It, it has seeds and it can grow from seeds, but it has to have very specific conditions in order to germinate. But once it has, creosote bushes have been found that are almost 12,000 years old. Because what the creosote will do, while it starts out like this, eventually it will continue to put out branches. It will in effect clone itself and the center of the plant will die off and you'll get entire circles of creosote. And there's one over by in the Lucerne Valley in California that they've actually dated to 11,700 years, which is about when the creosote bush first came into existence in the Mojave Desert. Now creosote is one of those plants that has a very specific odor. As I say, it's the, the smell of rain we tend to think of a lot of times. And it's something that is just ubiquitous across the desert. It used to be that people thought, well, it, it must put out some kind of chemical in the dirt and would kill all the other plants around it. In fact, that's not the case. The thing about the creosote bush is it's the most efficient user of water. It puts out the most efficient root system and everything around it doesn't have any water. If a seed falls near a creosote bush, the creosote bush is going to get that water before the seed does. So that's why you'll see creosote bushes not as big clumps, but with space between them as, because they have to have enough space to get the water in. It's now a plant that is a definitional plant for the Southwest. So whenever you're going through somewhere in the desert, you'll see creosote bushes. But in the Vegas Valley, we have very few left, mainly because of development. As we've grown up, we've gotten rid of a lot of creosote areas. And the thing about a creosote bush is if it's cut off, if it's scraped away, it's not coming back. So one of the things we did here at the museum is we've set aside some areas like this one so that when you come to the museum, not only can you see the physical history of the past, but you can see what the ground here, what the valley looked like when people were here in previous eras. So when you come to the County Museum, remember you see more than just the houses, more than just the artifacts. Take a look at the plants and if you come at the right time, you might even find them in bloom. Now, I'm Mark Hall Patton. I want to invite you to the Clark County Museum. Remember, we're only open seven days a week, 9 to 4.30, so it is hard to find us open. And we are only $2. It's an onerous amount, but I think you can do that. So please, come down and join us and come see the grounds.